Hello, I'm Christian Stevenson with the Mississippi State University Extension Service in Hancock County, and I'm joining you today to talk to you about wildflowers for Mississippi gardens. A wildflower is really just an uncultivated flower. A lot of the species of wildflowers that we have here in Mississippi and around the southeast are very hardy plants, well adapted to a wide range of conditions. They tend to be really hardy and self-reproducing, and because of that, that allows them to grow with very little attention from the garden. And these are species that we'll often find growing along roadsides, in meadows out in the forest, in fields that we're passing by. And there are a wide range of different wildflower species out there. And they include annual plants. Uh, those are going to grow from seed all the way to flower in a single year. Uh, perennials that can last for many years, uh, and all sorts of growing habits like vining plants as well as small shrubs put on some very attractive flowers. They're also included in wildflowers or a range of different grasses. The advantage of wildflowers is that they can be adapted to some fairly extreme growing conditions, uh, high temperatures, wet areas or dry areas. And many of us have areas in our landscape it may be difficult to grow in. I know I have several areas where there's a lot of water. It's difficult to establish some plants there and wildflowers are a really good option for areas that might be otherwise difficult. Wildflowers are also available in a really wide range of colors. All of the beautiful colors that you want out of flowers in your landscape, you can find something that's going to work that's a wildflower and will grow very, very well. Another advantage to wildflowers is they attract a lot of butterflies, a lot of seed-eating birds. A lot of the wildlife that we would really love to see in our landscape can be brought in and provided habitat by giving them wildflowers. Uh, one last advantage is that wildflowers are a very low-cost method of developing a wonderful feature in the landscape. Of course, wildflowers are native plants, and there are some advantages that go along with using native plants, whatever your region is. Landscaping with native plants, using those plants that are adapted to your area is going to be lower maintenance. There's going to be a little bit more uh, give in terms of how well adapted that tree is, it's, or that plant is. It's going to be able to tolerate the climactic conditions, the temperature that we have, the amount of water that we have. It's going to be a little bit more uh, or less prone to problems with insects and diseases because that plant is just really well adapted to the area we're growing in. And that uh, allows us to spend less money managing the plant, have less inputs in terms of pesticides and fertilizers. And importantly for me as a gardener, it allows me to uh, be a, a little bit of a lazy gardener and maybe put a little bit less work into having a landscape that's really attractive. So here you can see again with sustainable landscapes, with using native plants, using wildflowers, we're reducing the amount of pollution that we're adding in. We're not needing to, to mow an area. Uh, we're not needing to throw anything away out of that area. We're conserving water, uh, preserving water quality by not having pesticide or fertilizer inputs. Again, we're supporting landscape, all of the birds and pollinators, bees and butterflies that are going to enjoy that wildflower area and again, reducing costs for managing our landscape. Of course, we do also want to conserve wildflowers. There are some threats to wildflowers in terms of their conservation. Uh, part of that is just uh, urban development as we start to spread out into more rural areas. A lot of the areas where those wildflower grows, if we're putting houses or putting other uh, developments there, we're taking away some of the space that wildflowers need. So having wildflowers in your landscape is a great way to help conserve them. I do want to put a note in there that sometimes people will go out and collect wildflowers from the wild and introduce those into their landscape. And I would encourage you not to do that. Almost all of these wildflowers are available either as seed or as plants that you can purchase from some of our nurseries. I would encourage you to get your plants there rather than collection in the wild, because over collection of wildflowers can be a serious issue in some areas. When you are designing a natural landscape, there are some things you want to keep in mind. 
First of all, of course, you want to be aware of any regulations that your community has about vegetation height or vegetation features in your landscape. Make sure that you're going along with that. It's a beautiful fence line, a lot of wonderful flowers going along that, um, but you do, mind, you do want to check and make sure that your uh, local municipality isn't going to go mad at, at the plants crowding out onto the sidewalk. Another great idea for areas that include wildflowers is to frame the edges of that planting, really provide a defined planting area. I, I always refer to this as making it look like we're doing it on purpose. And you can do that as well with adding uh, permanent features like bird feeders or benches and statues. And that just adds a little bit of a formal element to the arrangement of the plants, it makes it look more like a purposeful feature in the landscape. Of course, wildflowers are another excellent opportunity to educate your neighbors and other people in the community on the value of native plants and the value of those wildflowers, what they're doing for the environment. When we're selecting wildflowers, we do want to consider a number of different things. Uh, there's some great options. Wildflowers can work very well with a traditional cultivated garden, uh, but some are also going to be adapted to some pretty harsh conditions like slopes or wet boggy areas. Really good example of that, uh, Rebecca or Black Eyed Susan uh, is very well adapted to dry areas, uh, whereas Cardinal Flower is going to be really well adapted to some wetter areas. So you can choose your wildflowers based on the uh, conditions they're going to be growing in. One of the things that's always a good idea in any aspect of horticulture is to select the plants according to the site you're going to be growing them in terms of the soil type and moisture conditions and sunlight. This is going to be a lot easier to have those plants be adapted to the site you're planting them, planting them in rather than trying to adapt that site for a particular flower. So what you want to do in order to plant wildflowers, uh, the best time to put down seed for them is going to be in the fall. So most seeds for wildflowers should be sown from September to November. Of course, that's here in Mississippi. Um, the fall rains, the cold soil temperatures during the winter is going to help that plant establish. And as it comes up in the spring, it's going to just grow stronger and bloom a lot better. Uh, that being said, you can plant uh, wildflowers in the early spring. Just keep in mind that oftentimes you'll see them start to grow uh, and do fantastic. However, they may not bloom until the following season. Uh, of course, any transplants that you're introducing for some of the wild larger wildflowers and perennial wildflowers, those can be introduced in the early spring. When you're preparing the planting site, keep in mind that wildflowers will often grow well even in poor soils. Uh, you do not need to till the area extensively. Uh, deep tilling is very likely to support the growth of weeds, and that's not something we want to introduce into our wildflower planting area. So light cultivation is all you should have to do in order to get really good establishment of those wildflowers. If you have any sod that's uh, there, particularly in erosion-prone areas, if you have a steeper slope where a lot of water is running, leave that sod intact, and that's just gonna help prevent any erosion. And very rarely will you need to add any fertilizer in order to help your wildflowers establish. Again, that's one of the advantages of this kind of planting. So we're not having to have that kind of input into the growth of the plants in this area. When you plant wildflowers, of course, you're, uh, you're sowing the seeds, and the seeds for wildflowers can be quite small. Uh, we're going to apply about an ounce of seed to a 600 square foot area. Uh, so because you have a small seed and you're, you're, you're spreading that seed over a pretty wide area, it can be kind of difficult to spread that seed evenly in the entire area. One trick to use is to mix those seeds with a standard uh, play sand material uh, before you broadcast it, and that's just going to help you get a lot more even distribution as you're sowing the seeds. Once you have the seeds out there, lightly rake that area. That's just going to ensure that the seeds have really good solid soil contact. And it's a good idea to mulch lightly over that area. That's going to help block the light to prevent weeds, 
keep that soil from crusting as, it's, uh, as water interacts with it. And you should see your first germ germination of your wildflowers anywhere from 10 to 21 days. That's a wide range because we have a wide range of different wildflower species that we're working with. Uh, if, you, uh, if everything works out right, you should see blooms in just five to six weeks, uh, which is always a, a great thing to see as they start coming up and adding color to the landscape. Uh, do keep in mind a few things. So perennials often are not going to flower until the following year. Uh, don't be concerned, just enjoy the, the leaves and the green that they're adding in. Uh, if you do have a large area, sometimes hardy grasses are a useful way to fill in uh, bare areas and to control weeds. Again, uh, grow with very little maintenance. And do keep in mind that you're going to want to enjoy your wildflower planting area. So it's a good idea to remember walkways. You can either uh, space those out beforehand and really plan out how you're going to uh, walk through your wildflower planting. Or you can do what I do and just use your mower as a simple way to add pathways after you've planted and the plants have started to germinate. There are a lot of seed mixes that are available to purchase for wildflowers. It's important to think that, that all of those uh, seed mixes are going to be designed to be suitable for a wide area and often suited to different sites. So all of the seed in there may not work in the same area. So when you buy those wildflower mixes, they may have some seed that are going to be tolerant of wet conditions and some seed that are going to be tolerant of dry conditions, seeds that are going to want different levels of sunlight. So you do want to make sure that the seeds that you use are going to be suited for the site that you're planting in. So you're often going to get better results by putting together a sowing mix yourself, using a single species, or better yet, picking four or five or six species that you really enjoy, mixing those together yourself uh, from annuals and perennials, and just the range of plants that you're going to enjoy in that wildflower planting area. Now, once you have your wildflower garden established, they are very easy to maintain. Of course, you don't want to have any uh, high nitrogen fertilizers added. That's not going to be necessary. It can be valuable to very lightly fertilize in the winter with a general, general purpose complete garden fertilizer, uh, something like 888 or 1313 at a relatively low rate over the area. Uh, you will have to remove weeds. Uh, occasionally weeds will establish in our wildflower plantings. Now I want to take a second here and just define what I mean by a weed. A weed is a plant growing out of place. Uh, so if, if there's something coming up in your wildflower planting and you enjoy the look of it and it's not causing you any bother, that's not a plant that you necessarily need to remove. Now I would keep an eye out for any invasive plants, invasive grasses, or invasive trees that might try to establish in these areas and make sure to remove those. But otherwise, unless something is damaging to the appearance or your enjoyment of that wildflower planting area, I would uh, avoid the work and, uh, and allow that to, uh, to grow where it stands. Uh, small stands you can weed by hand. If you have larger areas, uh, you can mow those in early summer or late fall, and that will remove the, the unwanted plants. Just make sure that you have that mower set at its highest setting. That will just prevent any damage to emerging plants. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm just going to give some examples of different wildflowers uh, and talk about their qualities just a little bit. Uh, the ones you see here, these are perennial wildflowers. Uh, some really gorgeous plants, uh, Boltonia, uh, Buttercups are a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Black-Eyed Susan is a, a gorgeous one that you can find in a number of formal plantings. Uh, some other ones including pra uh, Prairie Phlox, a gorgeous purple color to it. Uh, the Nasturtiums or Foraclots, another plant that you see in a range of different formal plantings. Uh, and there is a lot of options uh, on this type of flower, just all sorts of different gorgeous colors from yellows and oranges and purples that you can integrate in. Uh, 
uh, spider wart, and it comes up uh, fairly frequently in my yard. Uh, another plant I really enjoy with those brilliant purple flowers. Uh, some other examples, uh, we have our sun drops, uh, which are gorgeous yellow flowers, ironweed, uh, we frequently see that growing in fields here in Mississippi. Uh, verbena, again, uh, very commonly used as a ground cover. And one of my personal favorites is a vining wildflower, uh, and that's maypop, uh, sometimes also, also called uh, passion flower, that really nice purple color uh, and interesting sort of blue frills on it, uh, really attractive flower. Uh, now there are some uh, wildflowers that are annuals, uh, but as, they're, uh, as they come up, they produce seed, that seed goes into the ground, and we can see those wildflowers coming back year after year. Uh, my personal favorite of these is cornflower, uh, a flower so pretty they named a color of blue after it. Uh, and another favorite is henbit. Uh, I often encounter uh, this as a, a plant that people are trying to remove from their lawns, um, but it does have a really attractive flower uh, and worked very well in wildflower plantings. Of course, Calliopsis uh, with that gorgeous yellow flower of red center. Uh, some other example, bachelor's button, another personal favorite with another really complex uh, flower. Uh, scarlet sage is a wonderful plant, beautiful flowers, but also very attractive to butterflies and uh, hummingbirds. Um, and Queen Anne's lace, a uh, great, great introduction if you're a vegetable gardener, uh, because Queen Anne's lace is very attractive to some beneficial insects like lady beetles and uh, green lacework. If you do have some wet areas and ditches that you're uh, trying to get wildflowers to grow in, some beautiful flowers for that area uh, include the mallows. Again, a, a lot of variation and some interesting foliage that goes along with those. Uh, and another personal favorite, Leatris or Blazing Star with those huge clusters of flowers uh, look gorgeous in, in wet areas. Uh, some other plants, cardinal flower, as I mentioned, not mentioned earlier, is very, uh, very easy to grow in wet areas. All of the lilies, including the Turk's cap lily. Uh, if, and for a somewhat larger plant, uh, Joe Pieweed has these large clusters of flowers, so really large leaves. Uh, and they, those plants can grow quite tall. Uh, six feet uh, is the uh, uh, usual size that I see those grow to. Uh, but keep your eyes open because there are some uh, dwarf varieties of Joe Pie weed that are out there that have a, a shorter growing habit and may suit your landscape a little bit better. Uh, keeping in mind the butterflies and other pollinators that we'd like to attract, like to attract, wildflowers are a great way to do that. Uh, some things to keep in mind in order to attract butterflies. Keep in mind that large swaths of color are going to make it easier to attract butterflies. Butterflies are using their eyes in order to uh, seek out the flowers that they, they want to use. So having those large swaths of color makes it easier to attract them in. Of course, if we're trying to draw in bees and butterflies, we do want to limit the amount of insecticides we're using. We use those sparingly only when we need to. Uh, in order to prevent any damage to the caterpillars and to the butterflies that are using that area of the landscape. Some plants that work very well to attract butterflies include the asters, uh, joe pie weed, as I mentioned earlier, uh, spearmint works fantastically, and of course coneflower, all of the echinacea species, uh, lantana, and, uh, and bee balm all work very, very well to attract those adult butterflies. Keep in mind, we do want to have plants for the butterfly larvae as well. We need to provide food for those caterpillars. Uh, one thing that I'll often tell people is one of the best things you can have in order to bring those butterfly larvae in is a really good herb garden. Uh, so plants like dill and parsley do very well. Uh, of course, for our monarch butterflies, we need to include milkweed. And I would encourage you to use some of the native milkweeds that are attractive and they're just a little bit better for the environment and a little bit better for the monarch butterflies than the tropical milkweed that we often see. 
Uh, for hummingbirds, uh, again, the nasturtiums or four o'clocks are wonderful for hummingbirds, garden columbine, uh, cleome, all wonderful plants to bring these uh, hummingbirds in. Of course, there's nothing wrong with having those hummingbird feeders up as well, just to add the, you know, to get them a little bit closer to the house. But having these plants in the landscape is really going to provide them with a natural food source and really keep them coming back year after year. Uh, I mentioned beneficial insects earlier. Uh, plants like bishop's weed and yarrow are very good at bringing in those beneficial insects, providing them habitat. Uh, and you can see the beneficial insects living in that space and then moving into other areas of your landscape where they may be doing you the favor of getting rid of some of the aphids and white flies and other bothersome insects that you might have to deal with. Um, so I appreciate your time today. If you do have questions and you are unable to, uh, to join us today, I would encourage you to uh, give me a call or an email. Uh, my email is c.stevenson at msstate.edu. Always appreciate hearing from you.